Yes, we are ready. Right. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this fifth edition of uh, the webinars that GCCMC is, is, is creating. GCCMC stands for Global Coalition of COVID Medical Care. And is a, is, a, is a responsibility that has been created by Wipro. The reason Wipro got into this was, was sort of serendipitous, but it, it works with their tradition of, of being responsive to the community. So during the height of the COVID pandemic, uh, Wipro actually commissioned a hospital in Pune that took care of COVID patients. And thankfully, uh, the numbers that are admitted have coming down at this point of time. And despite the British strain, hopefully we stay that way. But it, but but COVID, COVID care has largely been centered around large cities. But while we were doing this, one of the things that we realized was that there was a need to disseminate information downstream into smaller towns and villages. So as part, of, but and also to continue this as a learning platform that can be at some point of time ready for a pandemic or ready for people to come across. The biggest enemy of all of this has been disinformation. That a lot of information that is available is from Medarbix, pre-published data, from, from WhatsApp forwards, eminence-based uh, opinions. Experts are few and far between. So one of the endeavors that we had done was, let's create a series of webinars where people can log in. They have to be clinicians, they have to be registered, they have to be practitioners. And we will provide a good platform with a great moderator who will field questions from the audience as well as from, for, will create questions that he has, she has heard over a period of time with a panel of experts and get their wisdom and not necessarily the written word. And based on that, we have done very, very, very successful programs. In addition to what I was telling Dr. Nandita, that we have also done an early learning module with about uh, nine modules each tw twice a week with over 600 people taking it and completing it as a course. So clearly there is still a thirst for knowledge from an authoritative source. And that's really what we have assembled here today under the guidance of Dr. Murganathan. Dr. Murganathan and I go a long, a long way back and, and our association is as long as a CV. So I will, I, will, I will not read it out, but say that, you know, he's, he's, he's one of those, those very, very unique pioneers in medicine who believes in the strength of internal medicine, the leadership of internal medicine, and he himself exemplifies the strength of internal medicine, bringing it to the fore, bringing people together balancing out the views, but always remaining unique and strong. Dr. Murganathan is from, is from, is from Tamil Nadu, and, and, and that's an added uh, uh, honor for me. Uh, but, but he represents India in its completeness. And the kind of panel that he has assembled today tells you his organization skills. With that, I invite Dr. Murganathan uh, to, uh, to take over the session. It's all yours, sir. Uh, and, and I welcome all our great panelists today and our audience that is, that is slowly uh, bulging up. But everyone here is as important as, as the numbers. Thank you very much, sir. Please ca carry on. Thank you, Dr. Krishna Seshadri, for those nice words. And I thank uh, GCCMC for uh, creating a platform for COVID exclusively. Uh, and you are doing a wonderful job. And now the uh, discussion today is going to be on the common problems. Uh, before that, I let me introduce uh, one by one. Uh, ladies, first, I, I'm happy to introduce uh, the charming lady, Dr. Mandita, who is the past president of Foxy. Uh, she is from uh, Mumbai. Uh, in fact, today she's on a vacation in uh, Lonawala. So from Lonawala, she's talking to us. So welcome, madam. And uh, I now uh, introduce Dr. Suresh Kumar. He's an infection specialist from Apollo Hospital. Uh, he, is, he has been doing a lot of work on COVID. Uh, myself and Suresh were uh, in the, uh, uh, the common platform to discuss various issues. Even on Tuesday, we are going to have one more uh, talk on COVID vaccines. Then uh, next comes uh, my friend, Dr. Chandar Seger, is a physician uh, who has got a, a good practice and who has a re really, uh, you know, a very sincere uh, internist. 
who has been doing uh, his uh, work for the last uh, 40 years. And Dr. Pali uh, Velu, uh, who is a, a, a very, very important person in the international laparoscopic area. And he was the past president of ASI, he is the past president of uh, the Laparoscopic Association. He runs three big hospitals in uh, Tamil Nadu and he is very well known for so many procedures, unique procedures. So, Palnivelu is a surgeon. So, I have got a surgeon and a physician and obstetrician and infection specialist. Uh, sooner, uh, Dr. Narendra Sayani, who represents uh, a family physicians and orthopedic association, he will be joining us. So, uh, the purpose of inviting all of them is to have their views on uh, what are the problems now they face uh, during this uh, COVID? So let me start with uh, the lady first because she has, as she said, uh, she has an uh, uh, internet problem. Now the pro internet problem is not there. So I'll ask her. Mandita, in the yeah. pandemic, in the pandemic session, uh, uh, season, a lot of doctors, especially above 60 years, they said they won't go to the hospital. They stop practice. And even uh, some practitioners, they don't know whether to practice or not to practice and what uh, what type of precautions they should take and what, uh, you know, uh, what will be the future for them. Because they are not worried. They are worried. Many, many people, they are not able to pay their EMI also because of the, there's no income from them for the pay, uh, private physicians. They find it very difficult to run the show. So as an obstetrician, uh, your views are how to combat this stress and what are your suggestions and words of wisdom from your experience, Nandita? Yeah, I think Dr. Murignathan, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. I think it's a pleasure to be here. And the COVID has been really stressful, I think, um, especially for, because it has frightened everybody and has actually made us sit at home. Uh, the only thing with obstetricians and guys psychologist is that our obstetrics was not put to a stop. See, people are going to uh, get pregnant, they are going to have problems, they are going to need checkups, and they are going to deliver. So as the field, obstetrics has been pretty, uh, I don't know whether to call them lucky, but yeah, they've been having work and they have been doing their work. In fact, uh, there are a lot of our colleagues who are working in uh, government hospitals or even in my private sector, where there were patients like my friend's daughters and all, I had to go and deliver them. And, you know, we were in Maharashtra above 55. We were told to actually sit at home, not to go venture out, especially with comorbidities. All of us, you know, literally half of us have hypertension or diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that has been stressful. But I think India, at least in Bombay right now at Leelavati, Leelavati has been a COVID hospital. But uh, what is happening now is a lot of care is being taken. So I feel in the smaller cities and towns, like I visited my native place in December, and in the villages, uh, COVID is very, very scarce uh, in this the quaint little, little uh, village of Palshape, COVID is not there at all. So I think we have kind of walled it off. Uh, India is very vast and diverse. So we have been able to kind of wall it off in certain places. But in places where there is a lot of COVID, we must remember that maintaining a mask maintaining hygiene, maintaining social distance is very, very important to prevent the spread. And uh, people are coming back because it's already now March 22nd to January 22nd is nearly 10 months. So people are getting back to normal activity. And uh, we have started doing all our uh, elective procedures like hysterectomies, et cetera. And IVF, which was told to stop the world over, also started functioning from June and July. IVF has also picked up because everybody had a lot of people working for them. We had to pay the staff. We have to pay our EMI. So everybody has started work with a lot of protection. And believe me, we have just published a paper where we had about five patients in our entire 150 which turned, which were positive. Right now, there are very few really positive cases which we are getting. So I think with the mask, with the, uh, with the hand hygiene, and uh, with social distancing, it is helping. And India, 
I don't know what it is. I would like to hear from the infectious diseases. What is the actual reason that we are in Bombay? The numbers are really going down. And believe me, it's not because of not testing, because all our pregnant patients are being tested, whether it's in private or it's in the municipal hospitals. All the pregnant women are te being tested. In fact, I have a friend who works in a government, semi-government uh, place and he said you know last year around September October he used to get three patients of COVID per day pregnant woman and now he's getting one per month so there's a definite drop which we are seeing and that definitely augurs well for 2021 and today I was reading that the vaccine would be available by the 16th of January for distribution so uh, it looks good and I'm looking forward to it, though the American College and the SRM does say vaccine can be given to pregnant women and lactating mothers. The RCOG has said do not give them, but they've just, uh, you know, now they're coming up with another uh, statement saying that you can give it to mothers with comorbid conditions. So the consensus is not yet out on whether the vaccine should be given and ICMR has not yet come up with any guideline for women, pregnant women. Hello? I cannot I'm hear that. Yeah, I think. This is not the So, what is the? I think, Nandita, you have given your views. I'm coming. I'll come to you. I'll have some more questions uh, uh, before I come to you. I'll ask now, uh, Doctor Suresh, because who's the person who uh, deals with COVID day in day out, and uh, his views on, uh, um, you know, the current scenario and his experience with all the general practitioners and physicians who are referring cases to him. Uh, Suresh, over to you, Suresh. Yes, sir. Because I started my COVID work in the date of March 30th. We took hardly two days for the preparations. March 27, 28, only I convinced there. Initially, the stress was to find out which hospital we need to convert as a COVID. As most of the hospitals, they don't want to take COVID cases there. If you see city of Chennai, if you see there are so many hospitals there, only one hospital in private care sector, all government hospitals are prepared there. But only one private care hospital at a point of time in March 30th, I remember, only one private hospital stepped in to look after the COVID patients. That is my hospital there. Even though Hapalo Greens Road is there, Hapalo Wanagaram is a place because I am the person, brain behind the person there. I know the setting there because this is a well-ventilated hospital, little bit away from the city there. A lot of space, a lot of aeration is there. Almost ICU itself, if you see the hospital ICU, you can see the outside environment. What is required for COVID? A lot of ventilation is needed. Less spacing, not too much crowding there. We need to have a good ventilated space. A lot of aeration should happen there. So we choose that hospital, almost 250, 250 bed hospital we have chosen there. Within two days preparations, because the problem is which hospital to localize, a lot of confusion happened initially for seven to 10 days. Then we pinpointed this is the best hospital as far as providing COVID care. We know COVID is basically a respiratory virus. It is transmitted. It is transmitted by air. It is transmitted by droplet. So we need to have a good ventilated hospital there. So we started preparing another hospital. All failed to take over the cases there. In fact, we find very difficult in the month of till April, May, initial week, where when a patient come want to get admitted in the hospital, the options are two: either they need to go to the government hospital or they need to come to our hospital there. When our hospital is full, that point of time. We need two negative PCR, even though some of the patients are quite stable there. The patient need two negative PCR to get discharged. So whatever patients got admitted in the month of March, April, first week, we stuck with till May there. And some of the patients is very difficult to get discharged as per the old guidelines there. So we find a lot of stress and challenges in giving bed to the new patients who are referred by the general practitioners. And almost all the general practitioners in my area, particular time, almost in Chennai, most of the people, they have closed the practices there. They close the practice, they're not seeing the patients. So a lot of stress for the doctors also, because initial week, first week, uh, 10 days later into the epidemic, April 5, I called the, the orthopedic surgeon from Nellur got admitted in our hospitals and he was died. And the body of the orthopedic surgeon was handled very poorly by the crowd there. They got mobbed, they didn't allow to bury him there. So a lot of difficulties we faced. That put a lot of stress on the doctors there, so they didn't want to take the patients there. Till month of May end, none of the hospitals backed us there, and a couple of hospitals slowly started 
admitting the patients in the private care sector so initial stress was look after the patients and finding the healthcare personals when i go and ask for the doctors and nurses to come for the covid duty most of them they said they have applied leave and went away there in fact the resident doctors almost 10 to 15 doctors who show the mobile they change the mobile number very difficult to get the resident doctors initially in the month of april may there nurses also almost huge drop in nurses there they resigned and went when they say we are going to post in the covid what they said i don't want i am resigning my paper within 24 hours resignation lot of resignation we received in the month of april and fortunately some other nurses stepped in and some other resident doctors and consultants there in fact in april may in my hospital the only department functioning is medicine and infectious diseases there all of the specialty no surgeries happened there no angio procedures no endoscopies no colonoscopies no routine hysterectomies nothing was postponed only emergency cases couple of cases that too with lot of difficulty motivating people and did it there but what is the trend now now everybody is taking up there everybody pitched in from august onwards i want to take covid cases because lot of financial stress and economical stress there everybody want to small nursing home or big nursing home they want to take covid patients most of them they take covid stable patients they don't want to take ventilated patient they don't want to take sick patients because lot of logistic reasons once a person died because of the covid death happened because of the covid very difficult to lot of uh, legal formalities and everything is there so they want to take stable patients and transfer on the patient become hypoxic or not that is why even in fact government threatened the nursing homes don't refer the patients at the last moment lot of hospitals taken up category a category b patients and refer the patients once a person starts sinking there so now in november december what happened the trend is most of the hospitals are free now covid numbers has gone down my previous speaker was telling what is the reason i do not know the reason is indians got herd immunity there we are not sincerely followed our lockdown if you do a zero epidemiological study there you can get the covid igg if you start doing it you can see igg is positive for most of the indians there we did in our hospital in the month of november last week almost 1200 our people are working in my hospital there the positivity serological positivity rate is almost more than 50% 60% of the healthcare persons has got covid igg and most of the people they don't admit it they won't came to our op and saying that i got fever there but now if i do the igg 60% of the people in healthcare is positive if you extrapolate the data in the community also lot of people has got asymptomatic or mild symptomatic they got immunity that is why now the numbers is going down only thing the variant is going to cause any the uk variant is going to cause problem i don't think so we are not check the variants in india an indian variant is much much superior to me for compared to the uk variant that is why there is no space for any variant in india right now but how long the immunity the herd immunity what we got in the last 9 to 10 months is going to last that is a big question mark we need to see there otherwise the numbers is coming down most of the hospitals are stepping in now they want to take covid cases because of the financial stress and everything there but now non covid area start almost back to normal i can put it there only thing some testing was required by treating doctors otherwise most of the people they are doing well Uh, uh, now i will come to pallivel pallivel your views now on this uh, stressful situation uh, uh, friends uh, thank appreciate for dr murunathan for uh, making me to this part of this uh, pandemic and he is very well known that uh, our hospital is uh, not treating uh, covid but still he made me to include eh? but even whether we are treating covid or not but every one of us has to have policy protocols and the way you know to protect ourselves and the safety for and improving the safety for the patient sake so that way i think we took a lot of measures for uh, um, our gen hospitals and i think a surgeon point of view if you want to talk about covid i think two three ways that as uh, suresh putin i through april government instructed us not to do any elective work and even central government also same thing uh, prime minister spoke on that time so we took it um, uh, emergency work in the month of uh, end of march and april and by time you know we thought it will going to settle down a month or two and uh, we prepared a plan uh, that but it uh, did not go it is almost now according to all of us it is 10 months even the people who became pregnant during this time and must you know has started delivering it so this is a 10 months something is a great na no? that way to get and the protective way 
and the surgeons particularly see but orthopedic surgeon died and made a problem and uh, even a neurosurgeon in chennai the same problem so everybody thought surgeons are going you know are very highly risky dealing with surgical patients in a uk report also uh, published saying that during a surgery particularly minimal like surgery the spread of covid was uh, uh, huge and it is wrong report and uh, but still the whole world looked at the article and uh, got frightened and uh, that way if we took at any hospital and uh, as a protective we took care of the out outpatients we took care in the inpatient we took care in the ot and uh, as far as the entry of the patient is always not only the patients guy coming ever coming patients relatives also will be there no it is a huge crowded uh, crowding is makes a problem so normally one relate one patient with the two three relatives will be there this time we made it a point that uh, one patient one relative can come rest of people have to be outside then what we made outside the hospitals all the trees become a nice way and eh? we made it a pakka uh, rest you uh, know it is not room we few rooms we made it outside but under the trees make the chairs clean nicely ventilation uh, we as uh, suresh put in ventilation most important so outside is uh, anyway ventilation is very good coimbatore climate is not a problem there and so that way relate to see manage out pain pain side patient we took it to one relative and we made a sitting there with the social distancing and give them mask every one of them even they wear mask outside we throw them out and we gave a fresh mask and put it nicely instructed them not to remove the mask and the entire procedure during investigation otherwise even takes 5 or 6 so that way we protect took a precaution but the surgeons outpatient examination were all frightened touching a patient growing closer very you know particularly we gastroenterologists have to do per rectal examination every patient and particularly if a cancer is coming then we have to make them cough and uh, raising a leg increasing abdominal pressure to look at for the hernia if they say complaint hernia we have to look at no so there uh, we have to make them cough coughing is the one that everybody frightened so many of the surgeons were afraid to touch a patient afraid to examine the patient by clinical history they were start running it then what we took it measures like a pp crane you know, protective amprans and this and teaching the patient how to be behave during examination like we took it care you know almost in the outpatient everyone and now hospital is fully running it and no problem patients are very considered they are very safe so no problem major surgeries minor everything is coming as usual and in patient also we may not know and the patient may come straight away with the pain or emergency surgery but we may not know whether they positive or not so where they you know we get a one floor as a isolation isolation in the sense it is not a for covid treatments say it is till we investigate whether the positive or not till the time we kept separately and regular uh, before surgery we say rest of the floors and ot the connection i see separately we kept it so the patients were also to, uh, educated you know not to move just till covid test comes or not and i'm very happy that government of tamil nadu did a wonderful work and even i know that western country is taking covid 3 days 4 days no tamil nadu we get it the same day it in only 6 hours maximum so even if you want to do planned surgery we can do it so and the third what is also some emergency doing it without covid we send a covid testing but we do separate theater we keep it for that purpose so an anesthetist separate pp kept and all the throat and uh, this where we are maintaining a discipline protocols and also endoscopic procedures we have a separate way doing it so this caution is very important particularly to reinvent in you know uh, treating time so we made a certain things protocol that we throughout this without interruption many of the hospital were closed as suresh must be knowing at that time any patient comes positive immediately the health secretary is uh, directed uh, we had a covid team they step in and they were inspecting it close the uh, hospital that's why smaller hospitals were afraid to do and many of the hospital even in closed also and we also very afraid that say but that's why we kept a separate entry for isolation in the sense till investigation confirms whether they are positive or not once it is positive initially we used to tell them please go to the hospitals where they are treating covid and that way sending it but later they realized and i am happy that uh, covid team of government tamil nadu gave a nice protocols the people who are less symptoms the people who are asymptomatic positive those cases need not be hospitalized these patients were sent home 
and uh, giving in a proper instruction may self quarantine in their own houses so that way it, it was very easy to be did managed it and uh, and most uh, most of the villages patients are coming and uh, i visited villages i saw casual no mask nothing but no infection also probably the ventilation or this and the beginning where villages were safe only the cities the people are moving closer getting one from other like virus infection and now of course after I started moving last and uh, you know, three months before that some of the village people also started getting it because people traveling from chennai problem with town to villages they, they started getting it but i think it is well controlled now and uh, i understand most of the hospitals you know everywhere it is uh, chennai madurai coimbatore most of the hospitals they were treating covid now the beds are almost most of the patients are free now and the elective work and elective, elective work is going up and that way i think uh, even vaccine comes they cannot go just like uh, because vaccine going to protect no because it is uh, we still be in herd immunity we know it is helping us but still we don't know how how long it is going to how much it is going to affect you so we have yeah. to run. Sorry, yes. so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. uh, so we'll we'll now you know. Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Otherwise, I'll leave it right. Uh, we have got lot of questions uh, there. So in between, I'll interrupt, intervene, and then ask you more questions. Now, uh, what's the first round of talks? Let's finish. Uh, we have to say, as a physician, uh, you are a physician without any hospital, and uh, you are a very very strong uh, uh, family physician. so what are your views short views you uh, tell us then we'll uh, you know ask small small questions which are which have come in the chat box uh, we all of us have challenges during the last year uh, depends upon which branch you did how intense you were and the volume of work we did uh, uh, mine uh, i am i am been here for in this town for the past past 40 years most of my patients are seniors uh, i mean up from 50 year to 5 years to 60 I mean the late 60s late 70s 80s actually about bulk of my practice uh, are are about about 60 most of my patients are about 60 uh during the early period early period of the pandemic actually we didn't have any idea about how to segregate those patients how to treat those patients during march when we had really tough time actually i mean uh, scp stepped in and you only your platforms gave us directions i think id specialist from apollo dr suresh ramagopalan and uh, i think subramaniam i mean they came regularly on uh, on those webinars i think uh, the first webinar i attended is dr suresh I, i thank him for that i think he described a case from i think from uh, uh, nri from us who was hospitalized and his parents were brought in i still remember the case every day they came on uh, almost every week they were there they discussed the case that they saw on the on that day they had they gave us some plans what they are going to do it helped us family physicians actually my problem was about segregating my seniors from the regular patients uh, i i after the third lockdown uh, during the middle of may uh, i mean uh, about uh, the last week of may actually i came i started practicing again most of my classmates who are in late 60s late 60s or early 70s they they are not practicing uh because uh, i have been with them for the past 40 years and uh, they they would like me to come back I, i came back again we worked for about 3 weeks but the case numbers were going up and so we couldn't stick to long hours even with the three ply protection and uh, shields and all that the work was terribly slow and the, the days extended from morning we start by 7:30 it went on till 5 so i had to consider going to close it down and i started taking tele i am still on tele i have not gone back to my clinic yet my patients are uh, they, they actually like request me not to come uh, just come back after the vaccines doctor and my children also advise me to stay back at home man still i am practicing on telling most of my patients are seniors so, so they cannot come back on the regular uh, tele platforms which are here i mean they are uh, i mean they, they are not computer savvy so i i let i had to divide sir sir i think yeah, your experience is very very important now tell me very simply as a physician practicing as a only outpatient uh, what is your setup in the telemedicine how do you 
get a prescription on the tele get it and come back on tele i had to devise something simple so i i i just uh, a lot of skype on both sides of with on a laptop connected it to a monitor uh, with whatsapp support um, at, at in, the, in the clinic i have a cctv monitor about 21 inches at home i have my laptop connected to with the skype connected to my regular hd tv through a long cable which gives me fantastic picture. Uh, I, I made sure that the, the power is there with uh, regular USBs. Uh, and I had two, two or three uh, I mean, uh, internet providers with uh, minimum uh, uploads of about four. Uh, it was not enough and everybody loaded in, the upload speed came down. So I, I made my upload speed uh, from minimum of 50 Mbps to 100 Mbps. So I get a streaming video completely. So I have not changed anything from, only I'm not there in the clinic. My patients come there, they go through the same protocols. Uh, they, they, are, they are healthy and, uh, and they, they, they just face the monitor. In and the and, and do you think uh, your patients are happy by doing this? Yeah, uh, they, they have become so comfortable these days that they don't get out of that uh, telly. I have to just, it's difficult to wean them off. They have become so comfortable, they, they, they just forget they are there on telly. But the only thing you cannot uh, auscultate or you t t feel the patient uh, uh, by you know by tele. Uh, I, I have got support from the nearest uh, image center. So whenever I think I am not able to do that, I, I send them for those the X-ray images or CTs. They they post those pictures. They they send me immediately almost. So in, in that way, I am able to fill the gap. I think I am almost doing about ninety percent of my work with the selection of most patients. Okay, okay, Chandrasekhar, Nandita. Uh, I'll come to you. Now, you know, uh, my wife is an obstetrician. The problem is, you know, uh, when uh, uh, you said you are you got a lot of deliveries. I agree. Uh, it's logical also. When everybody is locked down, they don't have any other work in the house. So, more pregnancies will come. That's no problem. That's an expected one. But the problem is, you say the delivery is due date is uh, January 15th. But they land in uh, uh, your hospital on January 6th. So you don't have time for doing COVID or anything, but still you have to take the risk and then do it. Uh, what is your uh, protocol in your hospital in case if they come like that? See, in most of the, what Foxy has decided, uh, what guidelines we have kept out is that when the patient reaches about 36 or 37 weeks, we must do a COVID proactive before they are uh, in the last trimester. Supposing a patient comes without a COVID to you in labor, then she must keep, be kept in isolation. As you know, uh, Dr. Pallani was, uh, Dr. Sheshadri, I think, was talking about it, that we have two different places. So those hospitals which have isolation, they are the ones only where we would take these patients. All hospitals do not have the facility for isolation. So if the COVID test is not there, then these patients would actually be referred to places where there was isolation. Or in uh, like where I deliver, there were three rooms which were kept for isolation. So the patients would go into isolation. They would be delivered there. We would wear complete PPE for delivery. Even if a cesarean had to be done, it was under full PPE gear. UV lights were used to sterilize the OT before and after. So a lot of care was taken and then the report would be available. So this was the, this is the protocol right now. So all patients are tested for COVID. Okay, thank you, Nandita. Suresh, you as an infection specialist, I see a lot of people above 60 years, physicians, and especially the physicians' daughters and sons, if they are abroad, they threaten and frighten the doctor, I mean, daddy, not to go. And uh, you think uh, it is the end of the, uh, their career, uh, about 60 years, and if they want to continue, what advice you give? So this depends upon the speciality, one. And second thing depends upon the clinic where they're working there. That's the most important thing there. I know for my, some of my colleagues there, they are about not some of my senior colleagues are there with this. Some of the colleagues, they immediately retired there. In the month of April, they put up the papers in our hospitals. We stopped practicing there. I know, I remember, it's a senior gastroenterologist. He put the paper. On the same hand, in the month of May, 45 days later, senior cardiologist, he says, I want to see my practice. Only this hospital is doing COVID. 
I need to see my cardiac patients. I need to do hangio. Please open up the hospital there. Why are you converting entire hospital to COVID hospital? So there are two sets of things there. And one more general practitioner is a senior consultant. He runs a small nursing home there. Till today, March 31st is the last day of his practice. Till today, he didn't went to his clinic there. But what he does, from the month of August onwards, he started doing telemedicine there. Oh, telemedicine from home. is home is opposite his nursing home. Opposite, in the same road, one side is nursing home, opposite side is re residence there. What he does is, he's not stepped out of his residence there. He has a junior doctor. Resident doctors is always there. He uses the help of resident doctors to get the history and everything there. And he tried to see the patients and try to get the whatever hospitalization findings with the help of the resident doctors. They are young people there. They're not having comorbids. So with the help of residents, he's seeing there. I agree. What you said is okay. I'm, I'm asking a simple question. A person who has got only one room, OP, only one room, OP, and he's about 60 years, about 60 years. He has to pay EMI, he has to pay so many things, and he has the children in the college, they have to pay college fees, and all those things, you know, it's a big tension and a stress for the individual physician, not a mini nursing home or a nursing home like a, what Nandita says or what a Palli Vele has. An ordinary, simple general practitioner, okay, above 60 years. What is your advice? That's what I said. If you suppose a person is a general medicine speciality or a family medicine speciality, yes, but a little bit of modifications in this clinic there. Yes, we know it's a 80 by 100 square meter there. At least some filters, you can keep it there. Some hair filters, you can keep it there. And you need to see the patients. Previously, the family physicians to see two or three patients together also they keep. They need to modify the, slightly the modify the practice there. And they need to maintain a distance. Whatever distance they are having within two meter distance only we are asking there. And if window is there, use the window. If window is not there, use some filters that we can able to do. And simple N95 mask is more than sufficient. If you think the space is a closed one, if they need to practice, yes, they can practice with a little bit of modification, sir. Okay, so if you have a little bit of modification and you change the model, you can still practice and no need to close. So you have, you think the life for 60 years above, people are still there, they can continue their practice with all the modification in a single room also, correct? January 2021, yes, definitely the numbers has gone down and vaccine is going to hit the market. Take the vaccines, do a little bit of modifications and do the practice there. Okay. Pali Vedar, you were talking about, uh, uh, in the meantime, Narendra Shani. Narendra Saini? Yes, yes, Can yes. I'm there. Yes, yes, very uh, much. Narendra. Loud and clear. Uh, Narendra, yes, Saini, you are the one of the uh, tall words in IMA, Indian Medical Association. Now, I was asking uh, Suresh, a single room clinic per person practitioners during the COVID time, especially above 60, 65, they are you know, finding it very difficult. I know recently uh, we saw in the paper some lady doctor committed suicide. They are not able to balance the home and the expense. And uh, what do you think uh, uh, your ideas and your suggestions for these people? I think if we take precautions, nothing is going to harm us. As such, the mortality is low. Only thing is that we are not able to maintain ourselves with masks, which we say that we are the mask. But if you see, as a doctor also, a number of times I have seen that we have not used the mask properly. Our mask is either on the mouth or in the nose, but not covering both the things. When we are seeing the patient, if we maintain that, rather, I'll tell you, I am doing the COVID testing as well. The other important thing is to maintain a ventilation. Single room, there is no issues, but maintain proper ventilation in your room. Unfortunately, what is happening is all our rooms are either ACs or now being winter happening, our rooms are closed because of the winter and we are having a, a room, room heater or something. So there is no proper ventilation. If we are using the mask properly, maintaining that to, uh, of a distance, which is to uh, around six feet and having a good ventilation and keeping some something and and uh, fourthly we are using sodium one percent sodium hypochlorite simple solution for disinfectant on a regular basis if we maintain these four or five things i think there is nothing to worry about it okay we Narendra, can, uh, you think uh, uh, the associations like api ima csi uh, can do something because you know uh, a single person, government doctors they are getting their salary they there's no problem Whereas an individual practitioner, 
Young practitioner, when they lose the practice and you say uh, pro uh, provide ventilation, etc., they have a small room. They are already been there for the last 30 years. Even there may not be any window also. So in those situations, what uh, uh, the associations can do? Tell me what association can help in this. One, one association has tried to say that about telemedicine. We try to popularize it among the patients also and got a clearance from the government also that you can do a telemedicine also. At association le level, otherwise, at you also being a very active member to getting a, some monetary help is not feasible. Or we can have some other place, well-ventilated rooms, which can be taken up by the association and we can say that, okay, at particular moment of time, you can come over there and use that space. Otherwise, no financial help any association can give for such kind of situations. Only yeah. if you have seen, we have created some... COVID martyr fund, those who have unfortunately not with us uh, and we are trying to compensate those families. But otherwise, it is very difficult. We have to coin our own ways of doing things. Associations can help them in, in creating awareness, in, in, in helping them out in ways to find the solutions. Uh, rather, now association can help them in vaccination is there so that they can get the vaccination early so that early immunity is there. All these things can be taken care of. Association can help them if they become victim to COVID uh, illness, then giving them proper care, giving them admission earlier so that they are uh, uh, taken proper care. Yeah, I know. So association can give moral support. They can give guidance, protocols, and whenever there is a need of emergency, they can guide them and give them proper uh, suitable advice and then support them. So there is no need to be panicky and there is no need to you know be depressive. So as you rightly said, now the uh, vaccine is there and the association is always there to support and help. Uh, Pali Vela, you are talking about your own big hospital. Your hospital is like a tertiary hospital. As an individual small one-man surgeon with 10 beds, what do you think uh, you can give an advice for them? Yeah, I, I'm getting, you know, physicians talking about tele, telemedicine. And the surgeons cannot talk right now telesurgery. Eh? It is uh, it is uh, not practicable at this stage. Of course, future and it is going to come, but not replacing it everything. But a smaller level it can be. So, but still, that uh, we had uh, ASI guidelines and we had a discussion also in the month of uh, June to address them how safe it is. Yes, in outpatient, what you do, whether sixty plus or forty plus or thirty material. Infection is always infection. A, once it is become positive, you have to go quarantine three weeks. Then finally, one month and your practice will be out. And next time people will look at this man is a positive fellow, we cannot go to him. So age is also is not here, but safe protection more important. But we have in surgical side, facial filters. Facial filters, if you use it, it has got almost 99 uh, uh, plus. It is a filtering the completely including Corona. So these uh, viruses are also filtered and that they can use uh, half face or full face depending on their uh, this, and they can safely consult, they can do PR examination, even they want to ask, they can do anything. And uh, of course, uh, hand washing and every after case, everything is more important, they can take it. That's why after later surgeons learn to do practicing individuals, can consult, can operate. During operation, there is no fear of infection spread. Anesthetists and uh, surgeons can have facial filter operate. That's why in our hospitals also doing it. Same advice, you give it to individuals. And the individuals uh, clinic cannot be uh, going to replace any uh, specialist uh, tertiary care or this. Any, any theater is the same type of infection. And surgeons, when operating smaller nursing homes, same risky. They are much more riskier than uh, tertiary because we have uh, protocols. Uh, smaller levels, no. So that's why individual protocol, they have to follow. You are advised to the small single nursing home owners not to get panicky, not to get discouraged. Yes, so that's why we told them June itself, we conveyed them, they can practice, they can do it. The most safest place is the OT, whether it is smaller nursing homes, bigger nursing home, but they have to follow protocols. And if they follow protocols, it is very safe. And you must also protect not only the surgeon, the paramedicals and nurses who are helping because they are patients. Every discipline is for everybody from entry down to completely and everybody has to go 
and the people who are working in the OTs, they are educated such a way that they cannot mingle everywhere, going and getting, you know, one sister, uh, paramedical people coming with a positive insight, then the program safe, unsafe, no. That education will give them, everybody, those people, if they go to their native place, village or somewhere, coming back, they have got a chance of exposure, we don't allow them inside OT and they don't allow mingle with the other stuff for next, at least, uh, uh, timing with the, again testing COVID negative, then we will allow them. Minimum at least five days, seven days, we will keep it. And for all your staffs, you do periodical COVID testing or do you do covering of the with insurance? No need for, no need for, unless they have a uh, history of exposure. They are working with us all the time. They are full time staffs. They are not going to one hospital or another. So, and they are all, most of the people we kept to COVID time stay in the hostels. And uh, we have the hospital paka protected. If any one of them or a couple of few of the people going home, coming back, they don't. we don't allow them to stay with the other people. We don't allow inside the OT till next a few days observing whether they are getting symptoms or not. And so, the doubtful, then we do a testing, then only we allow them to regular. Uh, uh, BMC, you think uh, this during this pandemic, the other alternative medicines have taken over because of the pandemic because doctors are not seeing the patient, doctors are not touching the patient and doctors are distancing the patient. So all the patients go to an alternative medicine and they welcome with red carpet and they're promoting the uh, uh, whatever medicines they have, they claim that they have the cure for uh, uh, COVID, etc. You think uh, your practice is being uh, you know uh, diverted or shifted to alternative medicine people? No, it has happened. It has not happened to me. I mean, we are we have been loyal to each other for the past forty years, and most of my patients have not gone anywhere. They are waiting. Not your patient. Generally, there is a trend. Trend, no. See, a patient comes to one doctor regularly. Now the doctor is closed the clinic, and where they will go? There is a person, alternative medicine person, is sitting, welcoming everybody. What do you say, Suresh? This situation, uh, do you come across? Uh, unmute, unmute, please. Please unmute. So, since I am practicing in a corporate, I have not personal experiences, but as you said, a lot of general physicians, we usually refer the cases to us. They felt the same thing there. When the patient is not seen by them, even some of the patients are offended when the doctor is not hostilitating. The main mantra, the main placebo is the physician should put the step on there just to auscultate. Whether we are listening for murmurs, whether we are getting a crackles or not, the doctor should put the stress on the chest, then only the patient will be satisfied. The government hospital, this is a rule there. If, if you go there, write a prescription, they say, doctor, you didn't keep the chest, stethoscope over it there. So they won't get, even the keeping the stethoscope will clear, um, improve the condition of the patients most of the time. There. That's the most important thing. So they got offended there most of the time. The doctor every time examines me with the stethoscope, now he's not using the stethoscope there. In my specialty, it's mostly listening the infectious disease. We need to dig the history and find out the answer. But unfortunately, for most of the physicians, general practitioners, this has happened there. When they're not seeing, when they use a telemedicine consultation or something there, people switch over to whatever mode of consultation available, the alternate mode or whoever, do a test or examination by keeping the stethoscope on the chest, they want to go there. This has happened. Not majority of the patients, but minority of the patients they can put there. They... People who are looking for the stethoscope, they went to the other person who put the stethoscope there. Adita, you are uh, you are work as a you are work as a obstetrician. Excellent. Okay, you want to say some comment about Suresh? Yes, Adita. I think I would like to comment here. You know, especially in big cities where the fear was very strong of COVID, people didn't want to go to the doctor. They were worried about going to the doctor and catching COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think they were very happy with telemedicine. They didn't want the stethoscope on their chest, frankly. So yeah. a lot of my patients, um, you know, pregnant patients for antenatal care, etc. They were very happy to do take their blood pressures at home. They were very happy to weigh themselves at home, to, you know, measure with using the tape, measure their fundal heights at home. And we were doing them all over telemedicine. So I think I think it's different in different places. People were scared. Those who were aware of COVID and how it can be contracted, how infectious it is, did not definitely want to go to a doctor's clinic. Okay, but I ask you a question, whether this time all the alternative medicine people have uh, different tactics to uh, attract the patients? Your views See, I, I think if our 
uh, I think uh, our doctors recognize this fact. The MBBS uh, allopathy has recognized the fact that this could happen. And after three months of lockdown, I think a lot of people started going back to work. But I, I personally feel that uh, patients are going to those doctors whom they have faith in. I mean, they may stray around for a little while, but they are eventually going to come back to the person they have faith in. So let's have faith in humanity and continue doing our work. Okay, BMC, you think uh, we can bring the confidence in among the practitioners and physicians, uh, you know, in the future now after this so much uh, lockdown, so much a problem? Uh, it's possible. Uh, things are going to go away. I mean, probably if you have vaccinations, if you become strong, if you approach the patients confidently, I think it's possible. Why not? Oh, somebody, somebody has closed the clinic for nearly six months. And they are going to re uh, restart the clinic. You think they'll get back the patient and they'll get back the confidence? They should. If they have been harnessed, if they have been hardworking, if they have been loyal to the patients in the past, it should happen. Why not? Uh, Suresh, what do you think of the situation now? Uh, yeah, you think the, um, the pandemic is under control or if there is uh, any other you know, extra second wave, the third wave, whatever? What is your view? Definitely the first wave is under control then. The first wave is getting down almost to uh, zero. It's approaching soon then. The first wave is going down. But as far as the second and third wave in this part of country there, because I told earlier, the first wave during the time, most of the people got herd immunity there. So how long this herd immunity and how soon the vaccination is going to happen? These two things only decide whether the second or third wave is possible or not there. Right now, first wave is definitely under control. The second and third wave, since a person has got immunity, most of the population has got herd immunity to me there, and vaccination is going to start soon there. With the vaccination-related immunity and herd immunity, hopefully the second and third wave will not be much more what they face in the first wave there. So this is the, what Europe is facing is different, what US is facing is different. And as far as India is concerned, the second and third wave, even if it is going to happen, the impact won't be great as is the first wave there. Okay, now there are uh, every day paper news comes, bird flu, dengue, and now the climate is so bad. So you think uh, those other things also will come and people don't recognize them and then uh, they, they get into problems because they miss the diagnosis of dengue or uh, uh, flu. You are an infection specialist. Tell us what, what something about that. Yes, sir. Till the uh, month of October or November, all conditions are COVID unless proved otherwise. The people say only two things. Pregnancy and fracture is not related to the COVID. All other things is due to COVID there. But in the month of November, December onwards, we start seeing protein stuff like dengue started. We are seeing cases there. Scrub typhus we started seeing. Only thing, the H1N1 influenza, swine flu, we used to see a lot. But now this time, the swine flu is not that much there. Maybe mask is protecting the swine flu. We do not know. Otherwise, the routine stuff like malaria also start coming up. Dengue started coming up. Scrub typhus start coming up. Typhoid is happening there. All other infections started. People also previously, everything... Fever means they want to put COVID first there. But now people are thinking COVID as a second possibility or third possibility. They are not thinking COVID as a first possibility, even though patient presence with fever there. So other diagnoses people are making now, other diagnoses also happening now, right now, particularly from December onwards, a lot of other cases we start seeing, not only COVID we are seeing there. Before but, November, but only you COVID. Advised, you are advised to the public and the doctors to continue wearing masks, continue the physical distancing, continue the... Uh, hand washing for another one year at least? Um, minimum six months, sir, depending upon the vaccines and depending upon the uh, epidemic, depending upon the second wave or depending upon the third wave, what we are predicting there. If it is not happening in the next three to four months, yes, they can relax also a little bit there. And you think all the doctors should be vaccinated, all the healthcare workers should be vaccinated because there is some reservation from the doctor's side. They want to see the efficacy of the vaccine, whether there's any side effect, etc. Because the too much of knowledge also is not good. See, ignorance is sometimes bliss. So all the doctors are not very happy to have vac vaccination. Your idea of uh, doctors getting vaccination, what do you say? What is your suggestion or advice? In the month of July, August, September, everybody is asking when the vaccine is going to come there. Yes. But now in the month of December and January, everybody is asking. We need to. We, we are conducting a survey part of it there. We are circulating the questionnaire to most of the people there. We did one survey in the month of December, first week there. That point of time, almost 60 to 65 percent of the healthcare personnel. I'm not talking about doctors. They said they are interested in vaccinations. Now, after the approval, we are repeating the survey to see what is <laughs> happening in the community now. But most of the people, so far, whatever responses I'm going through, the uh, responses there. 
they want to wait minimum three months to decide about the vaccination there. So this is a trend going on. But for me, people who have not had COVID so far, you have not had COVID and you got some comorbid, you are 60 plus or something there, you are going to see the patients better to take vaccinations immediately. Better to take vaccinations. People who had COVID, people who got some immunity, IgG is positive, the serology is positive, and your practice is not that aggressive previously. Yes, you can wait for the next two to three months to see that. But people who have not had COVID, your IgG is negative, you are doing an active practice, and you got some comorbid, definitely don't wait for it. Take something is better than nothing. Yeah, in fact, you know, one of the uh, senior physicians in Coimbatore called me. I asked him about vaccine. Then he said, I will follow only one step. I asked him, what is your step? Whenever you take a vaccine and you tell me what brand you have taken, I will take. I don't want to go into any detail because you are the person who has known everything and then do it. So, every doctor has got some reservation. What do you say, BMC? You think uh, uh, the uh, practitioners should start uh, aggressively practicing like before? Or uh, they will have to be very careful and then go slow? I think you have to take it in steps. I think you will have to get vaccinated. Whatever protection we get from vaccines, I think we should have. There is no point in waiting for the 100% uh, data and 100% proof for everything. It's not possible at this time. I mean, you, I am mean, I'm just waiting for the vaccines. I am still antenna. If I have vaccines, I think I will go to my clinic. Yeah. Nandita, Nandita, are you there? Nandita? Okay. Uh, before Nandita comes, finally, will. Uh, your views. No, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. I'm Nandita, there, but I can't switch on my camera. Doesn't matter. Uh, your voice is very sweet. You can uh, give your answer. Uh, you have done, especially obstetrician, have done a lot of good work. Coming to the delivery, the children and the uh, you know the, 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 the fear of children getting vaccine. I mean, COVID. Uh, is there any problem there? You know, uh, the initial studies which actually came out were very reassuring that the COVID is not transmitted to the children. But later, the December 3rd or 4th, there was an article from America which says that uh, COVID affects women and uh, women are at a higher risk uh, of COVID uh, severity pregnant women and uh, it could lead to preterm labors, IUGR, etc. Because now by the end of December, you've seen COVID infections in the first trimester, etc. So yes, COVID does have an effect, and but it's not as bad. And we have, uh, you know, learned to deal with it. We are treating it during pregnancy, but it is more severe in pregnancy, definitely. Only thing is that it doesn't pass on to the child. And uh, if we can maintain barrier nursing, once it uh, once the child is born, then the children can be COVID free. Though breastfeeding has not been, um, you know, not prevented, but you have to take care that the mother, COVID positive mother, takes a lot of care so that she doesn't transmit her COVID to her child. And uh, you are also attached to the pediatric uh, ward in your hospital. Uh, what about the vaccination for children? Are they coming regularly or you advise them to come for vaccination or uh, no vaccination during this time? Yeah, they are taking vaccination regularly because uh, we have a COVID-free entry and, you know, that particular part is completely isolated. So children come in and take vaccinations. And what because about we don't want that program to lapse. Uh, Suresh, what do you think uh, the vaccination uh, part of it? Now people are aware about vaccination. Do you think uh, the people above 60 years come for uh, pneumococcal vaccine, flu vaccine, or uh, hepatitis? Uh, the vaccination now, awareness is there. But do you think uh, people are asking for vaccination, other vaccination than they are taking? Yeah. So I am saying that because we run the adult vaccine clinic for, from 2014 onwards, there are almost six years around now. And every year we are vaccinating almost 15,000 to 20,000 people in our vaccination clinic there. Even before COVID, I'm talking about. After the H1N1 pandemic started, we started giving vaccinations and we started our exclusive vaccination clinic there. Other vaccination clinic I'm talking about, not pediatric vaccination clinic. And we saw our data. Every year we are vaccinating 15,000 to 20,000 populations in our OPC setting. In addition, all patients admitted with the hospitals with some cardiac problem or bypass surgery or some neurosurgery or some other surgery, major surgeries with some comorbid conditions, our discharge advice always, we give the vaccines, flu vaccines and pneumococcal vaccines before getting discharged itself. This is a standing order there. 
most of the patients admitted with a cardiac or kidney or liver disease or something there the patients getting discharged at home we give the vaccinations before they leave the hospital there this is our protocol there following covid the awareness among the vaccinations among the public is also going up when they are asking about the covid vaccinations we initiate about the discussions do you take any influenza vaccination even though this year influenza is bit less influenza vaccine is available season also started september is a season and the new vaccine is in the market do you like to take the vaccinations and definitely if you offer the suggestions 10 to 15 percent of the population they are not aware they want to take the vaccinations for the flu and similarly above the age of 60 we are giving the pneumococcal vaccinations they are also taking up so this is a right time practitioners particularly the general practitioners and everybody initiate the discussions about adult vaccinations particularly flu vaccinations and pneumococcal vaccinations for above 60 it's mandatory the people are listening now previously they are not aware of it now they are listening their awareness is also going up okay uh, pallivel you are doing lot of endoscopies in your hospital yeah uh, uh, you still do or uh, you uh, restrict your uh, upper gi and lower gi we do everything upper gi colonoscopy in the ercps everything we do regularly but uh, as you told you that we have a ppe k you no know, protective uh, kits and doing it there is no no, no not uh, except april month and uh, that also we did uh, that time also emergency after may onwards we are doing it uh, everything there is no restriction for anything you are doing all aerosol generating procedures uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. freely without then yeah, there is a uh, surgery there is no aerosol endoscopy is yes. because we may not know every case we did, we did not do that time covid before doing endoscope and uh, uh, of course uh, we keep them colonoscopy preparation isolation room and doing it but uh, diagnostic we don't do covid you now at that time but the surgery yes ercp yes if we do no. ercp then we do covid uh, do you do covid test before you do uh, endoscopy no so for everybody who comes for endoscopy the endoscopy unless you are planning for interventional or this one there is no need for this is what we hbb is on that all the viruses before they came and it is like examination and sterilizing the instrument to endoscopy that is what more important and nothing else but if you are doing planning for we want the interventional for example polypectomy if you want to do a is a endoscopy mixol resection you want to do ercp then that particular patient we do covid before taking up uh, suresh do you agree for every endoscopy patient why should not we do a covid test before we don't uh, undertake because it is safe for the doctors uh, who are doing endoscopy what is your view sir this is a big controversial one there right now people are doing before surgery the hiv and hepatitis b screening and everything there usually before any procedure if you do some proce- testing there the test is not a 100% perfect test there that is a problem there this is a 70% sensitivity maximum so 30% of occasions you are going to miss out there if the negative test comes it gives a false sense of security to the person who doing it and he ignores the pp and ignores the standard precautions there he think this person is negative the reason why most of the healthcare persons got infections because lack of awareness lack of thinking this person we need to assume standard precautions what standard precaution tells everybody's blood contain hiv hepatitis b hepatitis c if we do an pre operative testing hiv negative that is a problem that person may be in window period or the test may miss out sometime there similarly if you do a covid testing for every procedure the person falls in 30% category and you assume this person does not have covid you start doing an endoscopy without any adequate precautions you are going to get the covid there so if you take utmost precautions and your endoscopy room is well ventilated and utmost precautions is happening in endoscopy room it is not required yeah yes pal mile Uh, this 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 uh, no this is where it is uh, no as uh, suresh put in that is what the no whether positive or negative you have to take precaution and doing it that is where very important here even asymptomatic covid uh, okay done test negative does not mean it is a guarantee 30% 40% it is not going to tell you then you you may ask me to do ct scan to go ahead yes fine no that is why suspected patient covid testing is very important suspected patient even if negative then you suspect go to ct scan then take up for a interventional procedure otherwise no symptom i think patient coming regular check up we want to investigate protect yourself doing it doing the procedure that is very important whether negative or positive that means you are not going to get it no problem at all oh, but sterilization of the instrument is more important from one patient to another patient 
even uh, we always say even if your own brother your sister your uh, everybody you view them as covid and then try to be taking all precautions even exactly. in your home yeah you should do that that's what uh, everybody says but another problem uh, vmc the home and the hospital uh, because you are with your wife and children for example if you go to a hospital and you have a fear that you may get a infection and you will come and transmit to the family so many doctors when they do a duty or when they do in the private hospital also 14 days they are in the hospital they do, they they are reluctant to come to the hospital I and mean, house thinking that they will give the infection to the family what is your uh, outside experience uh, sir i am not exposed to that that thing i think suresh will be better to answer that. Uh, suresh tell me suresh uh, you see many pulmonologists when they go for hospital duty private hospitals they 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 there for a week they don't come home i ask them why because they think you know if they get at it also doesn't matter they should not spread to the home and the children unmute 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 so first i tell my personal experience and i'll discuss about the thing there yeah. <laughs> from the mass that was onwards i am going home there i have not gone into any isolations i have not gone into anywhere i have not done any isolation there i am going home daily i am mingling with my wife and my two kids i am doing daily there so from 31st onwards i am going to the covid wards also daily there from mass 31st i have not even taken any day only except during the vacations like diwali and other days i take off there otherwise monday to saturday i am going to covid ward in the month of april may i see 80 to 100 patients now i am seeing 15 to 20 patients a day that's the status there the isolations everything started by the government doctors initially there they wanted 14 days of duty 14 days of quarantine then they came down on quarantine to 7 days there so it created a lot of fear people they are thinking i am carrying the virus after the covid duty i want to take off there in fact in our covid ward also we are given half of 7 days there people go and stay there and some of the people they shift out of the house there they went into separate residences everything but what is required if you got a symptoms even though covid can transmit before the symptom onset what i do i started doing i measure my temperature methodically not the gun gun i am not at all relying there so do the your axillary temperature or oral temperatures daily check your temperature if the temperature is normal i am going home and doing the thing there so temperature recording is more important don't rely on the gun look for any asymptomatic or any atypical symptoms any atypical symptoms immediately isolate there don't think this is covid this is not covid i have taken water i rain yesterday happened i was drained in the rain nothing any atypical symptoms immediately start isolating there till that time you can mingle with the family there's no problem there is no need to worry about covid and carrying the bugs and transmitting the family members it's not happening there suresh 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 i'll ask suresh suresh Yes, and sir. temperature do you think till you develop temperature you are protective that your family people children will not get it infection a day before no that's what i'm saying asymptomatic transmission or before symptom onset for example temperature happening today then to me you, you, for you would find yeah. and a professional fellow can get exposure <laughs> why that day your children and family should get infection if you are going to get positive another day or two no oh, the before the symptoms two days the before doctor, the no may month of april may many doctors contact history if it is there they got isolated i think i personally feel it is sensible no, no for example i'm telling before... you no no i'm telling you because the your children family there is no professional risk why should not they should not get infection one of the time doctors were three of the transplant group i saw in chennai going around protecting everything is but all this they were sitting in one of the fellow doctor colleague only taking mask and a coffee snacks for half an hour and they left then the uh, so 48 hours time they developed these two days he would have stayed in the family then family people all the three people became positive in chennai these three people would have given infection to the family once history comes to know that contact history positive better it is a virus infection they should get isolated at least minimum 5 days no find is not a guarantee but at least 5 days to whether they are going to get positive or not if they become negative is fine but why you, we are making risk it for our children and family yeah no, but suresh i want answer for me uh, no children uh, i risk or in your in your, in your family uh, i don't know whether you have any old man suppose a old man with uh, hypertension and diabetes you are a uh, uh, father or uh, you know grandfather somebody so it's uh, as uh, palli will said the chance of you giving to them is more no so you have to take care of your older patients or older guardians in your family 
Sir is talking about the high risk contact there because in the COVID, people are worried about initially when I motivated my staff to join the COVID duty, they don't want to do the thing there. But the month of March to June, which healthcare worker was affected? People non no, people start doing non COVID work. They got well, infected, thinking this patient is not COVID. My colleague is not COVID. They lack the thing there. People working in the COVID area, we didn't get infected. Why we are wearing a PPE and we are going to the patients there? So if you are wearing an appropriate PPE and using appropriate precautions, the chances of getting infection in COVID not is very very less. So after the high risk exposure, what Sir is talking about is high risk exposure. Following high risk exposure, yes, you need to isolate. And if you got any atypical symptoms, either sudden onset of some body pain or some sore throat, something there, that point of time isolate. If there is no symptoms and your temperature recording is normal, that point of time, yes, you can go and mingle with the thing there. I know the risk is a small risk. Before symptom onset, the person may transmit the risk. By the risk is more relevant, but the chance is very minimal only there. During my, my symptom onset, for example, today I got fever means that day the maximum risk is there. Yesterday, the risk is there, but the risk is not that great. If I develop fever, my risk is go today. That's the maximum infectious period there. So that is why monitor your temperature axillary. Look for any atypical symptoms. Look for any high-risk contact. People working in a COVID area, most of them are protected well there. So if they do just COVID work and go home, they are safe to me there. People are doing non-COVID work. They are putting the mask up down, discussing with a friend, having a coffee, having a lunch, uh, going out. That is a the problem there. So I didn't do any type of activity. I go to the COVID ward, see the patients and go home, remove my PP and go home there. Okay. I agree, Suresh. That is what one medical gastroenterology and uh, he is very careful. He is like you, knowledgeable. But uh, by the time he he became no positive, by the time child and wife and uh, uh, father, all of the family people got it. That's why contact history, if it is there, and that physician or surgeon has to keep off from the family for next few days till whether he is going to become a symptomatic or not. Asymptomatic, whatever, I think that is my, even now, this December also, I will advise the same thing. And uh, they cannot get, make a risky to their family people. I and Murunathan was high risky people. High risky people are low risky people. Why are they risking them family? Yeah. In fact, Suresh, now the patients are very intelligent. You know, uh, two days back, somebody came. He had sore throat fever, the symptoms. But, you know, he uh, told the nurse, I have come for back pain. And then uh, when we checked the temperature, temperature is so normal because he took paracetamol and came. So he was looking very healthy, no temperature, no problem, no symptoms. After I started checking, then he said, I had sore throat yesterday, I had fever. You know, then, you know, uh, we get frightened. Suppose we do a COVID, it'll be positive. So sometimes the doctor's mentality, they don't do COVID because if the COVID comes, becomes positive, he'll be in a confusion. So just to relax it, you know, he, did, he doesn't want to do COVID. So there are certain uh, situations where, you know, people also will uh, fool, uh, fool us. But still, as you rightly said, whether uh, your brother, your sister, anybody who comes to you, you keep the physical distancing, you view them as a COVID patient, and uh, for another six months, if you take that precaution, I think that should be better. But as Pallival said, to sacrifice your family, especially when you are uh, having an older pa uh, parent with uh, comorbidity, even a minimal risk, you must be avoided. At least you, know, you cannot uh, have a dining table together. You can have a separate room. If you don't have a separate room, at least you isolate yourself. That will be simple. Uh, yeah, every doctor has got at least uh, two, three rooms. You know, One room, they can keep it and stay. And nothing harm in staying in a home and uh, distancing, social distancing is uh, strictly can they follow the next few days at home and uh, not to take a risk. That's what uh, it happened. Many doctors' family. That's why I very strongly say uh, to follow it. Suresh, lucky that he did not get and his family did not get it. The people, yes. doctors, how many people got it? I know them uh, personally. Yeah. That's what I'm telling. And uh, uh, it is it is that okay, keeping distancing for five days, one week, what harms it is going to get it? I'm working, sir, I'm working from March onwards. I'm not taking half. No, so you, are, you are lucky, I'm telling. You are lucky. Oh, that's all when I'm saying. taking, going to like a, if I think five oh. to seven days means there is no nah, five I, to seven I'm days. Seen for me. Nah, I've seen people putting a facial respirator. You may not even, whatever you have for your I PP. Think, I that. think the final advice, we take it because it is a practical suggestion and advice. So we can take it. We, everybody cannot be Suresh Kumar. So we'll have to be a boy person and then we'll try to follow what Pallini said. VMC, last question for you. Uh, did you get any COVID in your uh, telemedicine consultation? 
If you find COVID in your telemedicine, what do you do? How do you approach those patients? Usually, once I establish, usually either you have symptoms or you are, you you do a routine X-ray test. The radiologist suggests that you have GD shadows. You ask for HRCT. You refer them to the nearest COVID center. Uh, my, I have my friend sons working in COVID center. We happily take them. So you you do come across certain people in a telemedicine also. You can diagnose so COVID. You, we all had our share. We all had our share. Okay. Now I think we'll come to the end of that session. Nandita, please send. I mean, Nandita. Are you there? Nandita? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I am there. I'm there. Okay. Now, your words of wisdom, your drive home message, take home message, please, from your side. I think uh, till the vaccine comes, we must be careful. We must wear masks. That is a way of life for a couple of years at least till uh, we know what we are dealing with. And uh, now, everything that is cough and cold is not COVID also. We must remember that, that as all the other, uh, you know, esteemed panelists have said. And take care, social, uh, I mean, social distancing and uh, hand hygiene is very important. Thank you. Okay. Now, Palivel, your words are wisdom. I think it's infective, it's infective and it is not uh, going to become zero. So... And even if we are lucky that we are reaching it uh, with the humidity, I think we have to continue maybe next few months. And depending on this, we have to keep protection. And we, we as a doctors can go educate the public. People, public is still not following the proper thing. We don't want a second wave to come. All of us will let us work and educating the public and cautioning uh, you, you Britain's uh, experience now and uh, keep them and making a protection in any day, any number of time, lifetime, it is also good. So that education will continue. Uh, BMC, use your words. Uh, uh, most of the problems are in this period is about sustainability. We work, uh, work probably we don't make enough money. I think we should have some idea about financial planning. I mean, I don't think we, we, we are not as doctors, we are not aware of that. Like other people, either we don't have money. When we when we have money, we don't have time to plan something. So at least we should have some form of course, course or something. I may or somebody who could teach us how to take things. So I am I am seventy. It doesn't matter that the youngsters they should start early doing financial planning so that they when such wish come in the future. I think they everybody happen. They should be ready. That's a very, very, very good set of advice. Suresh, uh, before you give your wisdom, many patients, especially younger patients, uh, they are asking me, sir, can I go to cinema theater? Can I go and mix in the wedding party? Can I, you know, my sister is getting married. Should I go? Uh, like that, you know, so many questions are asking. So what is your general advice for uh, people in, in this particular month? So the general risk is whenever we want to go to a particular place, what I am looking at, when I go to a particular place, what I am looking at it, what sort of place I am going, if it's an open space or a closed space, first thing I look at it. If it is a closed space, whether the window is open, whether doors are open or not, second thing there. Then how many people are going to be there in the closed space? If it is an open or closed, how many people are there? Then how many people are wearing the mask in the space? And what sort of activity is happening there? Whether speaking, shouting, yelling or something there. So these four things is mandatory. Whether it's a closed to open, whether the how many people are there, whether they're wearing a mask or not, what sort of activity is happening there, and how long you're going to spend there. If you're going to spend a less amount of time, if it is an open space and you are wearing a mask, definitely you can go. For example, beach, you are going walking, there's no need for a mask also if you are not going to come across anybody. If you are going to a gym, if you're going to a gym, not gym, I'm going to gym there. So if you're going to gym, so uh, what I think there, you need to see whether the person is having, whether the person is uh, ventilated, window is open or not, whether air condition is running or not, how many people are there in the gym, whether they're wearing a mask, whether the gym items are properly cleaned or not. So this is what we need to do. If you're going to the theater, two and a half hours, you're going to sit together and people are nowadays eating the popcorns, everything in the theater, not in the veranda there. That's a problem now. So the chances of getting infection is very high if you're close to theater. We need to encourage open data like Prathana, what it was there. Unfortunately, it is now closed. We need to encourage open data. We need to encourage less number of people there. Or we can run more shows. That's better thing there. But don't encourage full occupancy. Don't take unnecessary risk. This is a risky time there. Wait for another two to three months. Take vaccine. 
Okay, very good, uh, uh, Suresh. I think uh, we'll wind up. Uh, uh, we all have given very good advice. So I summarize. Uh, one of the good advices is anybody who comes to you, you view them as a COVID patient, unless proved otherwise. The COVID times have given a lot of good things. You have lessons to be learned that you follow all the precautions, wearing masks, physical distancing, hand washing, cleaning the surface. That is also very good. And VMC's suggestion, as a doctor, we are not very good financial consultant. So we must have a financial consultant. Even in the beginning of the, your profession, you must make sure you have some insurance coverage. Unlike the government doctors, we should have some protection. And also talk to the family about uh, various issues and let them also get involved in the uh, practice. And as Panlival said, whatever problem is there, don't worry. If you follow proper uh, uh, restrictions, you can do any surgery, anything you can do. You protect yourself as well as you have to protect your family as well as the healthcare workers. So, so many people are depending on us. Not only family, all our healthcare workers. Suppose if a doctor gets uh, sick and if he closes the hospital, nurses will not get salary. The hospital will close. So we will be all the more careful to do that. So continue our uh, masking, continue our, uh, I always say, follow women. Women means, uh, you know, um, uh, washing their hands. O means observe certain uh, physical distancing. M means masking. E means, uh, you know, uh, good exercise and eat the good, in good uh, eating habits. And N is no uh, travel, no touching the nose, always say namaste, no hand sign. So this is what I say, follow women, and this is the precaution. We should follow this for another six months. And uh, your uh, news about the not going to the theater, maybe, uh, 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 you know, negative information for all the fans of somebody. So, but still, that is a good advice because I thought, and your advice is vaccine. Vaccine is always better than no vaccine. So always take the vaccine uh, when it comes when you get an opportunity to vac get vaccination, you should get vaccine. And I'm very happy to share uh, one more information. The GCCMI has already asked me to talk about vaccine uh, in the next uh, session. So we are preparing the questions pre-test and post-test. And then we are going to come out with uh, only vaccines. What are the vaccines? What are the side effects? When to take it? Whether it is right or wrong? All A, B, C, D about vaccines. So our title is no vaccine to say no to COVID. So that title we are doing, and then we are going to do this all over the country. So people, please watch for the vaccine uh, webinar sooner. And uh, any other question you have, please feel free to write to the GCMS. We will be answering all your questions. And uh, I appreciate Nandita and uh, Foxy. They are doing wonderful work. They have not stopped any work during COVID times also. In fact, my wife had more deliveries than you know before COVID. So I am more worried because she is going and uh, delivering uh, emergencies. So I tell them, uh, I tell her, be careful when you come, uh, be careful because I am worried. Also, <laughs> there are situations when, uh, like COVID, uh, Suresh Kumar was doing all the time, COVID, 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 and in spite of his COVID, he always spends time to spread the knowledge. And I thank uh, Suresh Kumar for any time when I call him for any COVID uh, information, he comes uh, handy. And VMC now started his clinic. He closed the clinic for four months because her daughter, I mean, his son and daughters advised him not to go, being 60. Now he has realized that right. at 60, 70, he can follow certain procedure and he modified his practice into telemedicine and he's now comfortable. So his words of wisdom for all these physicians above 60 years, follow VMC, no problem, you continue. And the strong, encouraging, charming uh, words from Nandita for all the obstetricians and the GPs are very good. And Pallivel, as usual, aggressive in his uh, thing, only thing, Take precaution, take precaution, take precaution. And COVID is not a big problem. All of you, when you get the opportunity, vaccinate, vaccinate, and always have prevention. And you continue your service with all the precautions so that not only you save yourself, you save the family. I think last word from Krishna Seshadri, because he's the architect of this program. So let him uh, give the uh, uh, Krishna Seshadri your uh, views. Thank you, thank you. It was very heartening to hear of you. Uh, and uh, know all your experiences. I think one of the things that uh, I realized at the end of this program is that uh, that these experiences need to be put together in a, in a format that will help our young clinicians get back to regular practice. And I think that is a need assessment that I that I am able to make at the end of this session. One is I think we need some we need some really good sessions on on financial planning. 
as dr chandrashekar said you know many of us think that real estate is financial planning many doctors you know uh, they don't have time to count the money and and, and let, let let alone save it for a rainy day the ones who have had long practices like many of you are probably safe but i think we need we need some really good help for people who are not there so i think one of the things we should probably develop is actually a financial planning module for young clinicians to work as unstructured as this as this program was the idea was to share experiences and that's one of the most important uh, uh, thing that we realized and many people are under stress today because of poor financial planning the second reason that many people are under stress is because of their emotions a lot of us are are afraid that if we go into work that our elders will get affected our children will get get affected and that and and that has prevented us from acting on good information like what dr suresh kumar has said and starting our practices carefully and and without much uh, and you know be careful but don't be afraid i think that is a message that that we have not given in the in the past and we need to start giving again and again and again and again the third thing that i learned is is you know about the role of uh, of organizations such as ours we are and and one of the things i learned is that that very few of our organizations have have supportive mechanisms for people like young doctors who may suddenly be out of a practice out of patients not knowing what to do and i think there is a need for us to strengthen this that formal places of support uh, forums where where speak out and you know or or even anonymously say you know what i have missed my last five year insurance premiums will i lose in life insurance i paid it for last 15 years i think these are very very real situations that our younger people are facing i think we need to meet again we need to meet again and and discuss these issues today we got over the fear but i think we need to also start help our young people start planning that 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 this is not going to be the last time that we get a zoonosis dr suresh kumar i'm right that this is not the last time that that we are going to import a virus and this is not the last crisis that a young physician is going to play i think that needs to be one of the things that gccmc will do some some people may feel that why did we have an unstructured conversation because this is exactly what it does that it brings out more than anything else it brings out the crux of this of 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 our our dilemmas there is no evidence based medicine here there are different opinions here but then for our younger people we need to start doing these kind of things because we lost an entire generation of physicians to this pandemic some of my teachers are no more i'm sure many of your teachers are no more and i think it's important that 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 we create the support systems for this for our for our society physicians have been the poorest in taking care of their own and i think that is something that was very evident in in in, in the discussions that we've had and we will come back i think one of the nice things about gccmc is that you know uh, with with the support of wipro we will be able to come back and and seek all your help in doing this and again we didn't have too many people today but and i hope that the people here learn something that they can go back and go back with practice uh, uh, strongly without fear i leave dr leave it to dr murugnathan to give the last word uh, and uh, thank each one of our our participants today our our wonderful audience that has stood by us our our our, our panelists for their wisdom i hope we can give you more and more over a period of time thank you so much uh, thank you krishna i think uh, yeah vmc you want to say something yes i think it was in the early months of march uh, when my op room was consultation waiting room was full and they were, most of them had fever I, i i i didn't know anything what what how about to go 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 about at that time as only both of you that you murganathan and dr suresh with your webinars gave us some confidence some direction and i i take this opportunity to thank you both thank you thank you you know that is why always uh, you know good information for the doctors encouraging words from our uh, specialists always is very very helpful in fact krishna was talking to me about this uh, quite some time and you know periodically we must uh, you know dispel the information and we must make the doctors understand then only they can talk to other uh, patients when doctors themselves are afraid and they are reluctant the problem is will be more so as uh, somebody said fearless hope more 
and also uh, you know you must be careful but you, you need not be afraid all the time you must take uh, the, uh, the ventures with the proper precautions when you go to a war you must have the complete uh, shield same way whenever we go to hospital it's like the war but still we we'll, uh, protect ourselves i think uh, uh, forums like this are necessary because one day we cannot uh, solve all the problems and my one request to krishna even though the attendance may be less you kindly uh, upload the video in your uh, website so that people who have not come will listen to the uh, wisdoms of suresh uh, bmc and uh, dr palli velu uh, the encouragement whatever they said for a surgeon for a physician for a practitioners nandita's views on uh, you know general all are very good i think every word is very important we can upload it and uh, the minutes of the meeting whatever you said you can form a minutes of the meeting and you can send it to 25000 people you have the uh, database so do you say these are the minutes of the meeting these are the advices given by the experts and then you you make a minutes whatever you summarize that was very good to krishna you can put it and then send it to everybody whoever is not attended at least they know that's very good so please uh, you know uh, uh, download and also record and then uh, upload it in the uh, website thank you krishna for the opportunity the video will be in the in the website tomorrow itself mostly and 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 the weekly digest will also be sent to everyone so thank you so much appreciate it yeah i thank everyone thank you very much namaste good night thank you bye 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 uh, jim uh, pmc suresh we'll go thank you